Both trees and solar energy are key to building more sustainable cities, but they are increasingly in conflict. Urban trees cool our cities, absorb runoff from storms, and give us oxygen. People are happier and healthier under the shade of trees. At the same time, rooftop solar energy systems give us equally important benefits by cutting air pollution, reducing the need for coal, and providing energy independence. But when trees shade solar panels, problems arise. Solar panels require direct sunlight in order to produce electricity, and they simply won't work in the shade. So you really need sunny space. You need sunny real estate in order to cost-effectively install a solar system where it's going to work the way that it's intended. If, if a solar system is installed on a residential rooftop, for example, and it's shaded for half the day, it'll only produce 50% of what it otherwise could produce. We're trying to look at just having people raise consciousness about the fact that trees have negative shading impacts. We like the shade in many situations, but if it's going to impact your neighbor, then you need to be thinking about that. By planting the right tree in the right place, we can usually avoid conflicts between solar access and trees. If you want to plant a tree, learn about the shade footprint it will create when it is mature. Some species, such as ornamental fruit trees, don't tend to grow tall enough to shade roofs. Most of the time, it's best to plant trees on the west or east side of a home rather than the south side and south facing is the preferred location for solar panels. When mature trees already exist in areas that also have good potential for creating solar energy, controversy may follow. The city of Denver faced this issue when work began on a large solar project for the Denver Housing Authority. Residents complained when they learned some trees would be cut down to make room for solar. Denver officials are now working to balance solar energy with the economic, environmental, and social benefits of trees. The Denver Housing Authority project is a, is a very exciting one. It uses a, a new model whereby we're able to get private sector capital, private sector investment, to pay for installing solar systems on over 650 affordable homes. Basically, we have the, the two assets here. One is the thousands of rooftops around Denver which are ripe for solar. The second asset is the large mature tree canopy and the conundrum is, is we like them both and we need them both. To balance the desire for a groundbreaking solar project on the public housing roofs with the benefits of trees, officials worked out a compromise. Between the two partners we sat down and came up with a way where we could have a win-win and the win-win is looking at every tree. The harder decisions are where there's trees that are healthy and, and beautiful and mature that block solar panels and that's really that's the meat of this issue right now. When it comes to trees, urban foresters say size really does matter. Tall trees provide eight times more economic benefits than small trees and can add 10 percent to a property's value. Large shade trees reduce the impact of climate change by cooling hot urban areas and they improve air, soil and water quality. They even have been shown to lower blood pressure and speed recovery rates for hospital patients. In Denver, officials may decide it's better to pay the developer of the solar project for less energy production because of decisions to protect some large trees. We've established an expected baseline of production from a given unit, and if, that, if the actual production falls below that and it's attributable to the shading from a tree that we were unable to move, then there would be some penalty assessed to DHA and they would pay us, they would make us whole effectively. What's important is to look at the whole system of an urban environment holistically and see how everything that's important to us can work together. You know, the importance of producing power through on-roof solar panels as well as all of the benefits that we get from our urban tree canopy. Communities around the nation are grappling with similar issues, responding with a range of policies, including ordinances and easements. Experts agree that education on what kinds of trees to plant where and how to prune existing trees will help. There are some uh, cities, uh, states across the country that have decided that uh, solar access is important, and so they've enacted ordinances to allow for solar access. 
the law usually protects the status quo. So it seems that if you put solar panels up and there's no tree or no blockage, that you should be able to preserve that, right? You should be allowed to expect that. That's the way the law usually acts with things. But we haven't been doing that with trees. We've just allowed people after the fact to plant a tree that then encroaches on your solar right. So I think that we need to maybe start at least at this point saying, let's educate the people who are planting the trees so that they know the impact. I think most of them are very uh, supportive of solar energy and they would be supportive of, of urban gardens. And, and they're not even aware of what they're doing. So I think educating them up front will really help because I think they're trying to work together. The arborist industry, uh, city uh, foresters, private foresters, um, they have the knowledge and the ability to look at a tree, to look at a site, and to, to determine the cuts that are required to give some solar clearance and not harm the tree. Another way that you can do that via the private sector is uh, via the legal system and an easement. So you may purchase an easement from your neighbor. Before a project begins, that's the best time for the customer, the investors, the contractors to sit down and say, do we foresee a potential issue with, with shading? Are there rooftops that are unshaded where we're not gonna have this conflict? Are there other rooftops that are shaded where we're gonna have a tough decision to make? And the best time to talk about that is at the beginning of a project. So if you are thinking of either solar or planting a tree, do some research about how to avoid conflicts. If you want to plant a tree, talk to an arborist. Figure out the best species and the right place to plant to avoid shading problems in the future. If your tree is planted poorly, it might actually harm your neighbor's efforts to generate clean energy. If you are interested in solar and have some shading issues, maybe you need to cut down a tree, add some insulation, and plant a new tree. Maybe new technology like microinverters will help, or you could make your solar array bigger. Another option is to buy into a community solar project. The better solution would be if we could come up with creative ways with the energy provider to have solar gardens, to have, you know, take these, these areas where people can, you know, where we can have these larger uh, uh, expanses of solar that a property could buy into so that they could live within the shade of trees but then still gain their energy from some renewable source that's in a spot where there are no trees where that can be controlled and it doesn't create the neighborhood conflict in Denver, the city is in the midst of a campaign to plant a million trees. The Colorado solar industry is pushing for a million solar roofs. Can we have both? From, from my perspective as an urban forester, you know, I will be doing my part to try to, you know, wherever I can, you know, encourage education of arborists to understand a little bit more about solar. And I would hope that, you know, some of our leaders in the solar industry can do the same and try to help some of the, the solar industry understand a little bit more about trees and just trying to stop that, that trees versus solar mentality and, and try to come up with more of a trees and solar mentality. We're planting trees across the metro region for the full pantheon of benefits of having trees. So in doing this, at the same time, we have initiatives to put on a million solar roofs. So those two things could possibly be in direct conflict. But what's nice is as the solar industry and the arboricultural industry are coming together, we can do both million at the same time. We just need to be smart about it.